Hi friends, Steve here, standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, and I'm here today to remember Glenn Fry from the Eagles and to visit his memorial statue. I'm also going to share with you some famous gravesite visits sent to me by subscribers. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and gravesites. My trip down memory lane today is for all of you Eagles fans. I'm sure that many of you have already been here, but for those of you who haven't been here yet, here's a preview. In 1972, the Eagles released their very first single, Take It Easy, and put this corner in Winslow, Arizona, which is located right on the famous and historic Route 66, on everyone's map. The song was written by Jackson Brown and Glenn Fry, and according to the song's Wikipedia page, the song got its start when Jackson Brown's car broke down here in Winslow, Arizona, and he had to spend the day here waiting for it to be fixed. In 1999, the town decided to commemorate the song by placing a statue here of a man standing on the corner here with a guitar, along with that famous flatbed Ford, in front of this Winslow, Arizona mural. Then in 2016, shortly after Glenn Fry passed away, they added the second statue of him. Today it's a very popular landmark with people from all over the world coming here for selfies and to remember Glenn Fry. Now I've seen other vloggers come and I've seen that there's just a park I guess behind here. It's just a, what's left of the wall of a building. Look at all the, the tourists here. <laughs> it's pretty easy just to uh, hop off the freeway and then hop back on. Yay! According to his Wikipedia page, Fry died from pneumonia resulting from other illnesses. He passed away in Manhattan on January 18, 2016, and he was only 67 years old. He was cremated and has no final resting place to visit, so this statue has become a memorial. Kind of hot. <laughs> it's a warm day here. I wonder if this is life size. What a beautiful day. Look at all the people behind me. They're all uh, getting their selfies. I'm assuming that everyone watching this is already familiar with the Eagles, but you know what happens when you assume. So in case you're not familiar with them, they were one of the most successful bands of the 1970s. They earned six Grammy Awards, five American Music Awards. They've sold more than 200 million records worldwide. And Hotel California is one of the all-time best-selling albums in the U.S. My favorite Eagles song has always been Desperado. How about you? What's your favorite? Share with us in the comments section. Now these are... Uh, I wonder if these were people who paid money to raise money for these statues and for this, uh, this exhibit. Probably. That's usually what happens. There's so many people here. I want to try to get a picture before. Uh, it's so bright, it's hard to see. There. <laughs> I had no idea it was going to be this uh, crowded here or so popular today. I thought I would probably be the only one here. I can see why it is though. This is really nice and I can imagine on the weekends this must really be the place to be. Very cool. I'm glad I uh, hopped off the freeway to see this. In 1971, a year before the Eagles had their very first hit song, actor Ben Johnson won the Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for his performance in the now classic movie The Last Picture Show. He died from a heart attack in Mesa, Arizona on April 8, 1996, at the age of 77, and is laid to rest in Pawhuskett, Oklahoma, at Pawhuskett City Cemetery. And Carolyn Christensen sent me this photo of her visit to his gravesite. And Chris Serene, whose YouTube channel is Chris the Shriner Dog, sent me this photo from the gravesite of Mormon leader and pioneer Brigham Young, which is located in the downtown commons in Salt Lake City, Utah. Young died at the age of 76 on August 29th, 1877. Chris has been visiting gravesites for quite some time now in Utah and has posted them on his Flickr page. Just search Chris Serene on Flickr to view them. 
Stephen Porsche recently visited the gravesite of Ulysses S. Grant Jr. and sent me this photo. Grant was the son of President Ulysses S. Grant, and I was very surprised to learn that he's buried at Greenwood Memorial Park in San Diego, California, a cemetery I visited myself about a year or so ago, not knowing that he was laid to rest there. Apparently, Grant was a heavy smoker and died from throat cancer at the age of 77 on September 25, 1929, in the city of Sandburg, California. Rick Brawley recently visited Woodlawn Cemetery in Detroit, Michigan, and sent me these photos of a number of Motown music legends who are all laid to rest here. As a baby boomer growing up in the 60s and 70s, Motown music was the soundtrack of my youth and the Four Tops and the Temptations were two of the most popular Motown groups. David Ruffin was the lead singer with the Temptations and sadly died from a drug overdose at the young age of 50 on June 1, 1991 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And three of the Four Tops are also buried here. Lead singer Levi Stubbs died from multiple health issues at the age of 72 on October 17, 2008 in Detroit, Michigan. Obi Benson died from lung cancer and other health issues at the age of 68 on July 1, 2005, also here in Detroit, Michigan. In addition to being a member of the Four Tops, he also co-wrote Marvin Gaye's 1971 hit song, What's Going On? Peyton Lawrence died at the young age of 59 from cancer on June 20, 1997 in Southfield, Michigan. And I think it's pretty cool that all three of them are buried here together at Woodlawn Cemetery. And I'm happy to say that the last surviving original member, Duke Fakir, is now 84 years old and still performing. It's hard to choose, but of their many hit songs, I'd have to say my favorite is probably Ask the Lonely, but probably tied with It's the Same Old Song. How about you? What's your favorite? James Takak sent me these photos from his visit to Duke Farms in Hillsboro, New Jersey. The property is home to Doris Duke's Pet Cemetery. Duke was a wealthy heiress and philanthropist who died at the age of 80 on October 28, 1993. Ironically, she chose not to be buried but to be cremated and to have her ashes scattered in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. But the public can still visit the gravesites of her pet camels, baby and princess, here at Duke Farms. For some reason, seeing these headstones reminded me of Michael Jackson's pet chimpanzee, Bubbles, so I googled him to see where he's buried, and it turns out he's alive and well and living at the Center for Great Apes in Wachula, Florida, and is now 36 years old. Subscriber Edward Petty sent me this photo of his visit to the gravesite of Jeffrey Hyman, whose stage name was Joey Ramone. The lead singer for the punk rock group The Ramones, he died in Manhattan at the young age of 49 on April 15, 2001 and is laid to rest here at Hillside Cemetery in Lyndhurst, New Jersey. So thank you Carolyn, Chris, Stephen, Rick, James and Edward for sharing your gravesite visits with us. And I also want to thank my latest Patreon supporters Jay Etchell and Optimum Prime and my existing Patreon supporter Stuart Chastain for recently increasing his pledge. Thank you, Jay, Optimum Prime, and Stuart for helping to make these trips possible. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and share with a friend. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done that. And if you did enjoy today's video, you might enjoy these as well. So until our next trip to the graveyard together, thanks for sharing the memories, everyone. <laughs>